Okay, so it's time to have a good look at the methodology feedback. Um, and the first thing we want to say is that we think you're doing brilliant. We know that this has been really difficult. You've been on your own during the whole process. Uh, and the quality of the work that we've been receiving from you has been absolutely fantastic. So you should all be really proud of yourselves because um, you haven't been able to have those face-to-face -face conversations as other year groups have had previously. And uh, we both felt that the methodologies that you've produced this time uh, are better than any we've had in previous years. So that's the first point. The second thing to say is that most of you have got a range of techniques uh, that inc includes both qualitative and quantitative methods, uh, which is great. So uh, qualitative are the more descriptive uh, methods and the quantitative are the more uh, the methods involved in uh, numbers. Most students have attempted to explain their sampling strategy and I think that's what this main feedback is going to be looking at, is going to be focusing on sampling strategy. It's probably the most tricky thing um, and it doesn't matter if you don't get it right, if you've got it right in your head, as long as you don't, you know, you don't necessarily get it right on paper, uh, but it is really important that you think about it and you justify it clearly. And this fourth point there is that most students have explained your work in enough detail that another person could carry it out. And that's what the methodology is all about. It's about somebody being able to pick up your work and reproduce your study. And when the examiner looks at, the, at your work, that's what they'll be mainly focusing on. You know, can I reproduce this piece of work by looking at this methodology? And most people have got that. But... Um, lots of you still need to do some work on that area. So the next slides are going to be looking at some feedback. So we're going to look at some main improvements and also good practice. The first thing to say is um, there's been some simple formatting errors and most of you now have got the correct font and you're using the correct font spacing um, but for this section, your methodology, we ask you to put it in as a landscape document. What you can do on Word is that you can go to insert um, page and you can put a landscape page in. If you might, if you want to, just Google it, yeah, how to look it up and it'll tell you how to do it. Now, the reason we tell you to put a landscape page in is because if you look at this page here, you can see as a landscape one, as a table, you can get a lot more writing in and you can actually put it in as paragraphs. Whereas on the next slide, this shows you what it looks like if you've got it as a portrait. It gets squashed up and this student hasn't written enough uh, in their section, um, but you can see it starts to get squashed up. And if we look back to the previous student, if you imagine if they'd have put that writing in the portrait one, it would have just stretched down. It just doesn't look right. It just doesn't look very neat. Um, I know that the link I provided to put a landscape page in didn't work. I apologize about that. But you should easily be able to look it up and find it online. So that's just a simple point. strategy um, is probably, as I've mentioned before, one of the more sort of complex ideas in your NEA. But it shouldn't be something that um, is too overly complicated for you. Um, I've just included here the slide uh, from the methodology PowerPoint that I put online to show you how to do it. Uh, so I thought I'd just look at this first and talk it through. So first of all, it says about how essential this is to reach the higher grades. Um, you need to explain the strategy you have chosen to think about and say why it's appropriate. That means when we say it about it being appropriate, that's saying if you're cho if you've chosen to randomly sample, why have you done that? So a random sample would be. To, re to remove bias. If you're doing a stratified sample, it might be so that you get a really good representation of a stretch of a beach. So if you did a random sample on a beach, it might be that you end up all in one area, yeah, all on the west side of the beach, whereas a stratified sample allows you to get a really good representation of the whole cross-section. Um, so it's really important you explain why you are doing a particular sample type. You need to talk about um, the, the number you're going to collect. So if you're doing a questionnaire, how many are you going to do? If you're doing a beach profile, how many are you going to conduct? 
um, and that's really important. Now onto each of these different strategies. So the first one is systematic. This tends to be used when you're doing physical geography studies. So it would be looking at normally distances. So systematic would be kind of a longer stretch of um, beach. You're doing a beach profile every 20 meters. However, it can be used in human geography. So if you're looking at a stretch of road, it could be you are doing, um, you know, every 100 meters. Or if you're doing a questionnaire, it might be every 10th person. So it, it can be used in that way. Stratified is a good sample. This is, Stratified can be kind of used, you can justify it in different ways, and that's why I quite like it. So it's always quite good for environmental surveys. You can say, I'm going to use a stratified sample, and my strategy is going to be, I'm going to do an uh, environmental survey every time the environment significantly changes. So that's quite a that's quite a good one to good one to use, um, and certainly for when you're using an environmental quality study. Random sampling is we used it when we were on uh, the beach in Wales. So here you need to have like a some sort of random number generator. So when we were in Wales, we used our phones to generate a number, and we had a grid, and then we could choose a particular point. I always made this point as people sometimes when they do their questionnaires they say i'm going to do a random sample i'm going to choose random people well there the point there is that you're making a choice and within that choice means it is no longer random you know so just be careful with the language that you use so the next bit to have a look at is some examples of this so here's a student who has talked about a different sampling strategy. I've included this one because they've said it's going to be opportunistic. Opportunistic is a type of sampling strategy. It kind of looks at really the convenience of it. So this student said, I'm going to do a questionnaire and I'm going to go to a particular area and I'm going to do that sample based on 25 people in a location and I'm going to try and make it as unbiased as possible. But I understand that it's based really on who is there. You might go to an area and do want to do 25 questionnaires and you only see 25 people. And so you haven't really got a choice of, of who it is. On this one, this good example of good practice as well, they've really talked about how they're going to do it. So it says, I will set a range of questions which apply to my title and sub-questions and it can be easily answered by members of the public. Next, I will go to my locations and ask a set amount of people in the area and record their answers on a piece of paper with my pilot study being used to make sure the questions and the amount are appropriate. This will consist of both quantitative and qualitative primary data. Equipment needed would be a pen and paper. I would really be looking to sort of talk about what types of questions I might be asking as well um, within that. So um, that's quite vague in some ways. You know, do think about that. Uh, we've already mentioned a sampling strategy, but here the justification here they're talking about what sub-question it's going to link to, which is really good. So it links to uh, what different perceptions do people have of the regeneration in Deansgate, which is in Manchester. Questionnaires will be vital in helping me reach a conclusion to this, as it will give me insight into the impacts of regeneration has had on people, or whether it's viewed in a more positive or a negative light. I would also like to talk here about um, what, what, else that, what else it gives me. You know, saying it gives me a really wide ranging views of the insights of other people. It's going to remove the subjectivity from my own views and opinions. I'd like I'd like to see that being included a little bit more. But overall, it's really detailed. It's really good. And I think if I had a copy of the questionnaire, it would be very easy for me to carry this out. The second one um, goes into much more detail. And here you can see they're looking at measuring footpath erosion and measurements. So here, that's what they're going to be doing. And here they've gone into lots of detail. And I really like the amount of detail that they've included in this. Um, it's really clear about exactly how they're going to carry it out. They talk through it in a lot of detail. They justify and explain their sampling strategy. And also here they really justify it and they've justified that why they've used their sampling strategy. So here it says the use of random sampling will prevent bias in my results. And I think that that's really key to look at. So I just want you to think about your methodology and think about the levels of detail you've included. 
and look at those last two examples which are varying levels of detail and just think about what, what does yours look like in comparison to that. Okay, a few more key points uh, that myself and Miss have discussed. Uh, and some of these will have been mentioned already in what I've discussed. When mentioning sampling strategy, explain why you chose it. So we've already talked about that. Is it to remove bias, to make it more accurate, to get a good representation across an area or about the society? Some people's descriptions of techniques are not detailed enough. These need to be so detailed. Yeah, I need to be able to know exactly where I'm going to go to and how you are going to carry that study out. You need to say whether it is a qualitative or a quantitative piece of data collection. Also, you could mention whether it's primary or secondary and justify how and why this is better for a particular sub question. You need to make sure you're mentioning the equipment you're going to need and you're going to use. The best methodologies have clearly linked their methods to how it's going to help them answer the sub questions. Again, we're living in strange times at the moment, so you're going to need to consider social distancing. Um, the student who is looking at going to Deansgate, their questionnaires, they might need to put those online. So we do need to think about that as, uh, as an alternative with um, how we're going to conduct those out. Some students also mentioned data presentation. You don't really need to talk about how you're going to present your data at this stage. It's all really about how um, you have collected it. So back to the beginning again. Like I say, we've got loads of good things that you've added in. We've seen loads of good practice. Hopefully some of these things here have helped clear up a couple of questions. So what we'd like you to do is to have a look back through your methodology and think about what you could add in to improve that based on the feedback that's been given. Good luck.